Now, we're going to take a break from honoring quality TV and steer over to shows and movies of the year that promote bad science, bad medicine, and bad hair. Every year we offer the Truly Terrible Television Award, and this year is no exception. Here to present it is a woman who has performed at Zany's, The Apollo, she's appeared on CBS, the Disney Channel, the Game Show Network, and she has an album on iTunes and Amazon called Al the Bum. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Hannah Ganson. No? Ah! Oh my gosh. Oh, hey, you guys, uh, so science, you guys are going to love this one. Uh, what did zirconium say to titanium? Get off of me! Because it's above in the periodic table of elements. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust out all my real cerebral stand-up on you guys. Real cerebral. So uh, here we go. Guess who had a lot of sex last night? Sex is what I call pizza. Uh, no. no, don't get me wrong, fellas. I'm real good in the sack. I, I won't just lay there. I'll, I'll get up and leave. Uh, no. I, uh, so this is nice. We all, we, all have, we all have dumb friends, right? Uh, I have a friend who, uh, well, she doesn't believe in dinosaurs uh, because they're not in the Bible. Um, so I've assumed that she also doesn't believe in uh, pineapples, uh, zippers, um, anyone named Eleanor, uh, popcorn. Popcorn, not in the Bible. Not once, not once. Uh, but actually, no, she does actually believe in dinosaurs um, because she um, thought tarragon was a dinosaur. And uh, I'm really glad I cleared that up for her. You know? Can you imagine she would have found that out by herself? She's like reading a recipe, and she's like... Let's see, six eggs, uh-huh, a cup of ketchup, uh, I don't really cook, uh, ter tarragon, this really is an old family recipe, ah! you know, I mean, you'd panic, because where are you going to find a dinosaur yeah, th this time of year, that's a seasonal item, you know, that's like, that's like trying to find watermelon and whatever month it's hard to find watermelon you know I live in this neighborhood it's nice I enjoy it uh, but I'm really getting sick of all these pictures that say missing reward and then a picture of a cat like what is it with all these cats stealing people's rewards I mean I've never even seen a cat in a Ralph's you know terrible with money cats they're just Seriously, how many of you know a cat that's good with money? Exactly! I was standing at the line at, at Sephora the other day, or Rite Aid, whatever you want to call it. And there are these two girls in front of me. And one of them had this uh, I Heart New York t-shirt. Instead of saying I Heart NY, it said I Heart KY. And I'm like, all right. And so, and I was like, oh, female bonding time. And so I kind of nudge her, and I'm like, ha, fan of the KY Jelly, huh? And she goes, oh, it's not I Heart KY Jelly. It's I Heart Kentucky. <laughs> Ew! Huh! I mean, like, I didn't even, I hardly knew her. And she said, oh, man, oh, no. I, uh, I'm from Iowa, and, um, and I love it. I said, I said that I told somebody about that. Then I'm like, yeah, I'm from Iowa. And they're like, oh, Iowa, the one with all the vowels. Like, like, <laughs> like vowels are just the most disgusting. Like, like, what? Can you imagine a world without vowels? All we had were consonants. We'd all be walking around just going the. Like, it would just sound like our brains are dying. You know. At least with vowels, if all we had were vowels, you'd be all like, like we would sound like we were fluent in Austrian, you know? That'd be awesome. But yeah, I, uh, I, I moved from Iowa when I, well, let's just say I, I want to leave. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, that's dumb. Sorry. I hope I didn't Illinois you. Cause you any Missouri. Now you want to kick my can's ass. Because I'm Nebraskan for it. 
All right, that's stupid. On to the main event. Um, I, uh, I, I didn't start talking about this until recently because I was kind of... Well, when I was 14, I, uh, I had a baby, and I gave the baby up and, uh, for adoption. And uh, it, uh, I think about her a lot. Like, I think about, like... You know, if she, if she's like me, you know, like if she she looks like me, if she acts like me, if 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 she too, you know, likes attention so much that she would lie to a bunch of people in an award ceremony about having a baby when she was 14. <laughs> and it's sad because I'll never know because she doesn't exist. Uh, but no, I, I am ready to have kids, I think, because the other day, you know, I did, I was out of toilet paper, needed to get groceries, so I did the adult thing, and I drove to Burger King, and I asked for extra napkins. Yeah, who wants me to babysit? Uh, I got the names picked out. If I have a girl, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name her Free Pizza, because, you know, when we're in the park and she's running around getting dirty, I'll be like, Free Pizza! Free pizza! And everyone's going to look at me! I'm going to get all the attention! Screw you, free pizza! You ruined my life! You ravaged my body! I, too, was once young and beautiful. <laughs> if I have a boy, I'm going to give him a strong, assertive name. I'm going to name him... Ah! Yeah. I mean, no one's going to know how to spell it, but, man, you're not going to forget that name, right? Yeah. Hey, who was that guy? Oh, him? That was... Ah! He wants to open a savings account. We work at Chase. Look at guys, my acting skills. I play two people, one scene. <laughs> How about that? Um, one more thing, and then I'll move on. Um, but my uh, my boyfriend told me, or, or mailman, what do you want to call him? Uh, he, uh, or sorry, mail person. Don't want to get another angry tweet from Gloria Steinem. Uh, don't go to my shows then, Gloria. You know, if you're gonna be a fan. Uh, but the, the, the male person, he told me that my apartment building is moderately haunted. Yeah, I, what the, I mean, that's some scary shit, you know? I mean, not the fact so much that it's haunted, but the fact that it's moderately haunted. <laughs> that means that there are ghosts out there doing a half-assed job! <laughs> bah! Don't you mean Boo! Yeah, whatever, you know. <laughs> All right, that's what I like to do, guys. I like to stu I like to end it on a real strong. <laughs> nah. Nah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now I like this. I like I like doing this rather than just your normal like mainstream. Yeah, boo to mainstream, right? Boo! boo! I despise mainstream. That's why I hate the Mississippi River. You don't get any more mainstream than that. I mean, I don't mean to get all hipster on you or anything, but I've been hating on the Mississippi back when it started out in Minnesota. <laughs> anyway, but enough of that. I am here tonight to present the truly terrible television award. Hello? Oh, I thought some, I thought, sorry, I thought that ghost was here. Um, the truly terrible television award by me, who is a truly terrible host, apparently, or, you know, or announcer person. But anyway, for, uh, for promoting the credulity of the boob tube, I don't know how to say words. Uh, <laughs> this year, IIG members have selected the Dr. Oz Show, featuring Dr. Mehmet Oz, a man who is too corrupt and dishonest for the United States Senate. Let's take a look. There's nothing ambiguous in the letter 10 doctors wrote about Dr. Mehmet Oz to the Dean of Columbia University's Medical School. We are surprised and dismayed that Columbia University's College of Physicians and Surgeons would permit Dr. Mehmet Oz to occupy a faculty appointment. He has repeatedly shown disdain for science and for evidence-based medicine. He has manifested an egregious lack of integrity by promoting quack treatments and cures in the interest of personal financial gain. This little bean has scientists saying they found a magic weight loss cure for every body type. On the next Dr. Oz show, is death just the beginning? I feel your husband's with you. I'm getting a William. Oh Are there dead around us all the time? Yeah. So is there somebody around me right now? Medium versus medicine. Who's right? It's such a huge leap for us in the medical field. What really happens when you die? I'm going to show you stuff that is 
mind-blowing. Plus, how to unlock your hidden intuition. Everybody has a sixth sense. Why the Long Island medium says talking to the dead. Who's the mother figure that's stepping forward as well. Could heal you. I do not want you to carry this burden. Please release the fear because it is not helping you. This November on Oz, Mega Pastor Joel Osteen and the power of prayer. Do you believe in miracles? My mother was given a few weeks to live. 30 years later, my mother is healthy and strong. You're kidding me. Where does medicine end and faith begin? The show's purpose is not to talk about medicine. The show's purpose is to talk about the good life, what you need to, to, to do to live your best. We're talking about near-death experiences. Dr. Mary Neal is a surgeon who was skeptical of near-death experiences until she drowned while on vacation. You practice medicine. You, you, you deal with folks in pain, folks facing death. I mean, how... how has your near-death experience changed how you practice medicine? After my near-death experience, and I began to see myself as a healer, not so much a surgeon. S science has so many insights about how the body functions. But, but I don't think, although we can describe the phenomenon of the out-of-body experience, I don't think it's going to answer the deepest questions we have about what death is really about. And I think those secrets are always in us, and they have always been in us, which is why we have to trust our gut uh, and when I hear this many people tell stories that all have the same theme, you have to believe in your heart that it's real. I mean, I've tried to really do a lot of research in pre preparation for this trial, and the scientific community is almost monolithic against you in terms of the efficacy of the three products that you call miracles. And when you call a product a miracle, and it's something you can buy, and it's something that gives people false hope, I, I just don't understand why you need to do go there. My job, I feel, on the show is to be a cheerleader for the audience. And when they don't think they have hope, when they don't think they can make it happen, I want to look, and I do look everywhere, including in alternative healing traditions, for any evidence that might be supportive to them. Now, thousands of years ago, the monks discovered how to eat to live longer. It's called the chakra diet. Ayurvedic medicine expert, Dr. Kuri Chowdhury, is here to reveal the best foods to fuel your chakras and keep you healthy. Because you're not just looking at the nutritional content but you're looking at the vibrational nature of the food, so the way that it actually looks and that vibration that's being perceived by your eyes is actually talking to your entire chakra system. That I, I actually uh -huh. do personally believe in the, in the items that I talk about in the show. I, I passionately study them. I, I recognize that oftentimes they don't have the scientific muster to present uh, as fact, but nevertheless, I would give my audience the advice I give my family all the time. Yes, and the sacral chakra is our creativity and sexuality centers. This chakra represents our self-esteem and willpower, mm -hmm. and it's linked physically to our digestive system. So the stomach, the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas. And if you look at some of the imbalances that occur from the chakra, things like eating disorders can result from emotional problems mm -hmm. with an imbalance in this chakra. It just pulls out all of the toxins in your digestive system. Yeah. And it really just feels like you're giving your GI tract a warm hug. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing the monks are able to work these issues out. I, I mean, know. over thousands of years. She called it the apple cider vinegar sore throat elixir. So, Javi, how'd you discover this? Well, my kids kept getting sore throats this past winter, and I just didn't want to keep giving them chemicals. Yeah. So I went online and did some research, yeah. and this worked. So show me how you make it. I, I do think uh, I've made it more difficult for the FTC, is that in an intent to engage viewers, I used flowery language. I used language that was very passionate, but it ended up not being helpful, but incendiary. I want you to write it down. Garcinia Cambogia. Because it may be the simple solution you've been looking for to bust your body fat for good. Now I've got the number one miracle in a bottle to burn your fat. Lightning in a bottle. It's a miracle flower to fight fat. It's called the Dr. Oz Show. We very purposely, on the logo, have Oz as the middle, and the doctor is actually up in the little bar for a reason. I want folks to realize that I'm a, I'm a doctor, uh, and I'm coming into their lives to be supportive of them, but it's not a medical show. Wait, I only bought them once, it didn't Can work. I just They're say, can did I you buy them because you saw them on Dr. Oz? I like Dr. Oz. I, I, will, I, will, I will confirm or deny I like him a lot. I like him a lot. I love Dr. Oz. And he's come here with really good I, advice. He has great advice. Done that. I and think. listen, if he's got magic coffee beans, I want some of that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm serious. laughs> you just showed a report that implied they didn't work. <laughs> You basically just did an Emperor's New Clothes piece and then ended it by saying, by the way, the Emperor's tailor was incredible. <laughs> that guy can stitch. Uh -huh. 
So for Poisoning the Airwaves, the IIG members voted him the winners of the TTTV Award for the 2014 TV season. The award consists of this lovely certificate printed on genuine imitation parchment. Reading, in recognition of the lack of scientific integrity and acknowledgement of the extraordinary ongoing deceit of the American public represented in this television program, the IIG is unfortunately obligated to present this award to the Dr. Oz Show for a truly terrible television, 2014. <clears throat> yeah. Let's applaud terribleness. Uh, we have invited Dr. Oz to accept the award, and we received a cryptic letter from his production office saying that Dr. Oz will be present in his own special way. I'm not sure what that means, but let's face it, Dr. Oz is a coward, a tiny little man who uh, doesn't have the guts to confront his critics. Um, he probably should have been like a farmer because then he could have like sold like a real horse shit and like people would want it because it was, you know, horse shit and they were asking for it. I mean, they clearly, you know, not this other horse shit that's going on. I don't know. But yeah, so I just have no idea what they meant by he was going to be present in some way. I'm really confused about that. Real confused. I you wonder should how, be. What? what? I am Oz. What the? I am Oz. I have no video. <laughs> I have no lighting behind the curtain right oh now. Uh, you will be able to see me soon. As soon as I connect oh. to the thing that was supposed to connect me to the screen. Doctor, this what? is me. This is yeah. Me. A very flattering angle. Uh, Oz has discovered Oz GMOs, has discovered and, shaving GMOs and shaving cream. That's why you have a beard? That is why I have a beard. All <laughs> followers beard. of Dr. Oz, now must, of Dr. Oz now must grow a beard. That makes you look like Bob that Ross. Makes you look like Bob Ross. <laughs> Now, give Oz his now, tribute that you talk about. Uh, well, Dr. Oz, this isn't a real award. We're making fun of you. It is Oz who will have the it last laugh. It is Oz laugh. who will have the last laugh. My medical interventions, My medical are, so interventions are so potent that Oz has transcended, Oz has transcended the material plane. The material plane. I could destroy the IIG. IIG. And could somebody put up that screen? The IIG, the IIG with but a shrug of my eyebrow. I chose to I keep, chose you, to keep alive you alive with slaves, slaves, slaves in my green, green coffee, coffee extract factory. Extract factory. No, no! Don't pay attention, don't pay to, attention that to that man behind the screen. Behind the screen. Stop, looking. Stop looking! No! No! Stop! Stop. <laughs> with a mere flick of my pinky, I will dissolve the FDA and force all medicine to be tested by Stedman Graham. Stedman Graham. What? Dr. Oz. Why am I hearing myself Why after me? Pay no, <laughs> pay, no <att> <laughs> <sighs> pay no attention to pay me. Pay no attention to me. Dr. I am, I am the great Oz. I am smoking. <laughs> I, have, I have said things. Yeah, you have. What, what's happened to you? You weren't supposed to do that. What, you don't uh, look so good. Uh, well, nothing happened. I'm in prime condition. Uh, this wheelchair is... Um, um, Averditic. Ever, Everett. Ayurvedic? Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic? Well, you don't look so... Ayurvedic. Maybe she... A lot of people don't know what that is. <laughs> I was going to look it up when I get home. But, uh, uh, it's using but... things that aren't really medical. <laughs> well, maybe you should get some actual medical care. Medical care is for corporate... Can we stop with the echo? Oh, it's over. <laughs> medical care is a corporate scam designed to give people things they need in return for money. Oz designs his own treatment. Well, you can stop talking about yourself in the third person. Oz believes that talking in the third person will cure cancer. I can already feel my tumors disappearing as I speak. I mean, as, 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 I, as, as he speaks. Ah, shit. <laughs> Look, maybe you should just take the certificate and go. Um... Um, okay, please bring the certificate to Oz. The wheelchair is not working so good since I replaced the gas with uh, ginkgo biloba. Um, and um, I'm not getting up. It's bad for the legs to walk. Uh, well, thank you. IIG. 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 Oz is pleased with your tribute. 
I'm going to put this on the wall where my uh, medical degree should be. <laughs> um, you have helped Oz fight for this treatment that they don't want us to know about. Wait, who's they, they, anyway? The they that should lose weight by drinking my stuff. <laughs> lose weight, they. Cut out food. <laughs> no food? more food. Pay no attention to my voice. I will stop talking now. <laughs> Dr. Oz, ladies and gentlemen. Hannah Ganson, everyone. <clears throat> and Ron Lynch as the Oz. And a late night edition, Jared Kaufman as the Pyro Man. When we were trying to figure out how we were going to do the pyro, I was like, I've been doing this since I was 11. Lysol in a, in a, in a match. It's easy. <laughs>